um, we're very close here to the boundary between the language specification and um, the way that the compiler is implemented on an actual host system. Now the language requirement is that um, the fully qualified names of any class or interface has got to be unique. That's a language requirement. Now when it comes to actually implementing it on a on a real compiler then you're going to have to find out it itself is going to have to find out whereabouts these classes are located in the in the host system and uh, this is the way that the Java compiler does it that's the uh, free Java compiler from Sun now um, the way it finds it is it, it actually mirrors the package hierarchy using the directory hierarchy of the host system and um, I'm using Windows here as an example so um, it might have something like this if we if you can remember back to what the um, example I gave earlier was it would generate classes located in in these particular directories like that and um, by default what Java does is it, it puts it puts classes into the same directory as the source file now for large projects you're going to want to keep them separate because for um, version control and um, archiving and that sort of thing you don't really want your class files mixed up with your source files and um, the way you do that in the Java compiler is you use the minus D option so for example we've got um, here's something here which is in this uh, my project source com acme widget server and there's the source file there, widget.java and, um, and uh, here's where you want the class file to be my project's classes, com, Mac and widget server that's where you want it to go and um, the way you would do that is um, uh, change to my project source there and use the minus D option and of course if you're in source you go up one level and down to classes that will take you to there and if you uh, and pass in the name of the thing you want to compile which would be from that source file there is comma widget server widget.java now a couple of things um, this directory that you specify there has got to actually exist if it doesn't exist the compiler will give an error and if any of these um, uh, subdirectories down here don't exist they, are, they get created because they're from this point downwards basically and if anything uh, if it's not there it'll be created if it is there it'll just be used and uh, that's how you do the compilation now most of this stuff is you don't have to worry too much about this if you're using uh, using something like NetBeans because most of this will be done it's, it's really going on in the background so you generally don't have to worry about this if you're using a, a, a normal interactive development environment but uh, that's basically what it's doing